And we're starting off with AEW, who films next week's episode of Rampage this past Saturday at the latest Collision, as the Friday show can't happen live, as the roster will be busy traveling to London. The Rampage taping saw many names who will compete in Wembley in action, but one star was very close to missing her match. Fightful Select reports that for Rampage's main event, a tag match between the four women who will compete at All In, Britt Baker only made it to Lexington's Rupp Arena with minutes to spare. This wasn't a case of Baker being lazy though, as she had been at a Culture City award ceremony with Adam Cole, who was presented with the Humanitarian Award for Person of the Year. Cole's perseverance during his concussion earned him the award, and when the couple took a private flight from Alabama, the Rampage taping had already begun. Thankfully, Baker made it to Rampage, and Hikaru Shida didn't have to go it alone against Tony Storm and Soraya, but we imagine there were a lot of nervous people backstage at the Rupp Arena. Over the past couple of weeks, a lot has been said about the career of Edge, with some believing that his time in the ring has come to an end. Edge himself has confirmed that his recent match with Sheamus was the final match on his current WWE contract, but there's been some mixed messages as to when this deal will end. While Edge said that he believes his deal expires sometime around October, Fightful Select reports that there is no confirmation as to when his deal is officially up. A source within WWE added that time was added to Edge's contract due to an injury, but sources close to Edge refused to confirm whether this was the case or not. Fightful's report points out that WWE has been noticeably quieter lately about signings, renewals, and other contract news, so they may already be negotiating a new deal with the Hall of Famer. We previously reported that there is growing belief within AEW that Edge could sign for the company, especially as he's close to many on the roster, including Christian Cage and FTR. Edge even attended a big-time wrestling event in which FTR faced the Rock and Roll Express, and Edge was name-dropped during the recent collision when JR was speaking about Christian Cage. With Edge saying that he isn't sure about his wrestling future, AEW's window of opportunity may be closing quickly, and what would you like to see next in this final chapter of Edge's in-ring career? Earlier this year, there was a lot of speculation about the career of Sting, with the icon alluding to the idea that his time in the ring will be coming to an end. Many predicted that Sting would retire at All In given the massive significance surrounding this weekend's event, but as Sting has made clear, his career won't be ending this Sunday. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer addressed Sting's upcoming coffin match with Darby Allin against Swerve Strickland and AR Fox and said it's simple why Sting isn't retiring. Meltzer explained that Sting simply doesn't want to retire at this time, and given his legendary status, no one feels it would be right to tell him to hang up his boots. It's not like Sting has been slouching in his matches, as he has repeatedly impressed fans when he gets in the ring, and could even wrestle several matches to come. Having Sting's last match happen in front of 80,000 fans would be epic, but it won't be happening this weekend, as only the icon will decide when his time is up. Speaking of Sting, Tony Khan has made it clear time and time again that he is happy to have the WWE Hall of Famer on board, hence why he isn't going to rush Sting into retirement. Since his arrival in late 2020, Sting has competed a total of 17 times for AEW and boasts an impressive 17-0 win record, but does his AEW work overshadow all that came before it? During the Chase McCabe show, Khan expressed his excitement over the Stinger, saying that for him, any talks about the biggest name in wrestling starts and ends with Sting. Khan added that bringing Sting out of retirement is one of AEW's greatest accomplishments and went on to call Sting's time with AEW the greatest run of the icon's wrestling career. That's quite the claim given Sting's legendary runs in both the NWA and WCW, and he would compete for several other promotions including WWE before becoming All Elite. Sting is indeed one of the top stars in AEW, but is his run with the promotion the greatest part of the icon's legendary career? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. In NXT, Ariana Grace has been making a name for herself, as the daughter of Santino Marella continues to prove that she belongs in the ring. This past weekend, though, Grace stepped out of the ring and onto the stage and competed in the Moose Universe Canada pageant. Grace, who in addition to the in-ring training and prepping for the pageant, has also been rehabbing an ACL injury, didn't win the title of Miss Universe, but was immensely proud to place in the top 20. Grace's last televised appearance transpired on the September 13th, 2022 episode of NXT, and she hopes to be fully healed soon, and we'll have to see what's next for her when she's back on TV. Now it has been just over 18 months since Cody Rhodes parted ways with AEW, and in that time, the American Nightmare has said very little about the exact reasons for his departure. 
While Rhodes has said that leaving allowed him to chase the WWE Championship, he's not spoken at length about what happened in the final weeks, which understandably has had fans asking questions. Speaking to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful recently, Rhodes addressed being asked about AEW since returning to WWE and admitted that it isn't exactly what he or WWE wants to hear. The American Nightmare noted that these questions tend to create more challenges than they offer assistance and said that he'd feel awkward refusing to comment on what's been asked. Cody added that while he's fond of his AEW run, he wishes fans and those asking questions could focus on his WWE tenure, though that is proving to be easier said than done. Cody is coming off his lengthy feud with Brock Lesnar and remains focused on finishing the story, and he'd love for people to recognize what he's doing now rather than what he did in the past. Do you think Cody is right to make this request? And is his tactic of not going in too deep about his AEW exit hurting the American Nightmare? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. Speaking of questions, Triple H is often left answering questions about WWE's booking when he appears for press conferences, and recently, a lot of questions have been around one superstar. For months, L.A. Knight has proven to be one of the most popular acts on WWE TV, but despite being over like Rover with the fans, that hasn't resulted in Knight getting prominent wins. Knight's most recent loss saw him fail to earn a shot at the US title, another booking decision that has left fans scratching their heads as to why the game is unwilling to give the SmackDown star wins. Speaking on Inside the Ropes, Knight states that he suspects Triple H could be annoyed at him after repeatedly being asked about him as opposed to bigger stars on the card. While Knight recognizes that the game may be getting tired of being asked about one guy, he added that this reaction shows that whatever he's doing on TV is resonating with fans and is working. In fairness, we should state that WWE is said to be well aware of how popular Knight is and have plans to push the 40-year-old star, but simply don't want to pull the trigger on him too soon. If WWE doesn't pull the trigger soon though, then it may be too late, and in that case, we doubt the game would be happy with being inundated with questions about wasting such a popular superstar. At TNA Victory Road 2011, the show's main event would go off the rails as Sting was forced to compete against a Jeff Hardy who was clearly in no condition to compete. The match, which ended in just over a minute due to Jeff's condition, is considered one of the darkest points in his career, but he wasn't the only Hardy at the event. During his Extreme Life podcast, Matt Hardy gave a timeline of the events, stating that Jeff was fine and sober just 45 minutes prior to the main event. Clearly, something happened in those 45 minutes, and Matt added that Jeff should never have been allowed to compete and had pushed his way through most people backstage trying to stop him. Speaking about his own reaction, Matt recalled his stomach dropping as he watched his younger brother in the ring, adding that it was devastating to see what was unfolding. Sting would be noticeably angry after the match, and unfortunately, this would by no means be the last Jeff Hardy controversy, and we can only hope that he is able to keep professional from here on. And we're ending today with MJF, whose contract with AEW will expire in a matter of months, something that the reigning AEW World Champion has brought up countless times. MJF has eagerly spoken about a bidding war between WWE and AEW, one that he plans on using to ensure the best deal for himself, but now a third party has hopped into the war. On Twitter, none other than Outback Steakhouse said that they wanted into this bidding war and tried to win over the salt of the earth with a lifetime supply of bloomin' onions. Of course, we doubt Max will be giving up his life as a wrestler to enjoy the salty, battered goodness that is Bloomin' Onion, but it's now up to the cons of both WWE and AEW to file a counteroffer.